Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the episode number 50 of the series of tutorial on how to build a premium theme for WordPress. Welcome again, in this tutorial we're going to take a look on how to properly style in a modular way all the elements and all the widgets that a user can use potentially on our sidebar. Before starting to style the sidebar, I want to just tell you that I updated a little bit the structure, the file structure of the SAS folder to have a better control on all the files, especially the admin file. I created a new folder called admin and inside I split the previously sunset.admin.css into two different files as CSS files, base and sidebar, and I'm including only the sidebar in inside the main sunset.scss here to inherit the same style of the sidebar from the backend to the frontend without repeating the same code. I did this because it's better organized and it's easier to manage this type of code, not having code repetitions. It's not necessary for you to use the same method, but if you want to grab these uh, files and update your source code as mine, you can access the GitHub repo, you can find the link in the description below, and access the lesson number 49 folder where you can find the new SCSS structure. Remember to compile in SAS with your terminal and you're gonna have the same file as I have. But let's get started. First, let's access the current status. Let's check the front end and let's check the current status of our theme. By default, I leave the sidebar open so every time I refresh it's gonna stay open. In the last lesson, we styled the first widget here, the custom widget that we generated to print all our custom information. Now we have all these other widgets that are still the default type of style. They're inheriting the default style of the page. We have to create some custom unique type of CSS only for the widget. So if we inspect the element and we check, we notice that all the widgets first are using the section HTML5 markup, and this is great. Plus all the widgets, they have the same class that the sunset hyphen widget. So we can control everything by styling this type of class to style all the widgets. And that's what we're gonna do. Let's access our code editor and let's scroll all the way down to the sunset.scss where we're styling our sidebar. And here, let's copy the comment here and let's write a widgets section. Let's write our default generic class that is sunset hyphen widget, or at least in my case, probably you can have a different class, it doesn't really matter. And let's style to emulate the same exact style of the single widget. So first, margin of 20 pixel, 0 and 40 pixel at the bottom. Now that we define for the first time the sunset widget class, we can do everything directly in the inspector. So we can check the style, how it updates automatically without us writing the code and then uh, checking the front end. We can do everything inside here, so it's way easier. Let's use the padding to create a little bit of space inside just to left and right. So let's have padding zero. 10 pixel and now the widgets are squished 10 pixel inside. Let's give it a little bit more because I want a little bit more padding. So 20 pixels, that's perfect. And here let's have a margin of 30 pixel and the bottom 60 pixel. So that is great. You're noticing here that I cannot scroll because I didn't do the scrolling yet of this sidebar. So for now, I'm going to change the bar to be on my inspector to be on the side. So you can also see the entirety, like the, the, the entire sidebar without the inspector cutting the sidebar in half. So it's a better visualization of what we're doing. In the future, of course, we will style properly the scrollability of this sidebar as well. But for now, let's keep it like that. So we like these declarations, let's copy those and let's paste it inside our code editor. Now let's style the title. You will notice that here we have the same situation in every widget. Every widget title is an h2 markup with the sunset widget title class. That's right, h2 
dot sunset widget title. So in this way, we're saying to the style, the code that we want to apply the specific class only if an h2 tag has this class and we are not going to override the default h2 tags of other sections of our website. So here we want to write display block text align center and then we want to have a font size of 15 pixels, a font weight of 300, background color of 303030 that is the background color that we are using in our design here plus we have to assign a little bit of padding to this that it's going to be most likely five pixel to have overall five pixel all around so let's go back in our front end let's refresh and now we have these type of bars all over the place let's assign a specific border radius to have that look of appeal that we like it that's right border radius and let's say 20 pixel maybe or maybe even less no i think 20 pixel is fine that it's perfect let's apply also a line height of one so it's going to be the line height with the one emphasis is going to reflect the same line height, the same value of the font size. So we can increase a little bit the padding, maybe of eight, that it's perfect. So let's copy these last three declarations. Paste it here. That looks awesome. And now let's give a little bit more space. By default, the H2 has a margin bottom of 10 pixel. I want a margin bottom of 20 pixel. And that's perfect. I like it. Of course, as usual, all this style that I'm doing, you're totally free to do it as you wish. Like if you want to style the sidebar in a different way, you can totally do it. Uh, just a little bit of notice here. And it's more of a design point of view that a developer. But if you notice here, we have this text that it's not really readable because we went on lowercase and we have a 15 pixel font size. We should increase the readability especially because it's white on dark and it's harder to read than a dark on white this type of color and font size it can be slightly hard for the high to read so we should increase a little bit the letter spacing and having for example 0 0.2 pixels and already with just this simple 0.2 pixels of letter spacing, it's way easier to read this word. Like the letters are not attached anymore and it's more readable even on a dark background. So let's try always to, even when you're developing and you're not doing style, let's try to check all these areas that you're coding and see if they're actually readable. It's something slightly harder and you can increase or improve the readability with a, couple of CSS tweaks. Now we have uh, sort of an issue <laughs> because all these links are getting the default uh, coloring, a default rollover effect of the A tag, but we want all the A tags to, to be like light gray and then having a white rollover inside the sidebar. So that's what we're going to do. Basically, we're going to get the generic container of the sidebar that in our case we can do inside sunset sidebar. So inside sunset sidebar, we can keep doing it by declaring A and all the A tags color of E, E, E. And then I want a rollover effect over and focus of white. Oops, <laughs> color white. That's perfect. Let's refresh here. Now it's way more readable. And the of course the difference the rollover effect is not really visible because of course from E to F is just one step. So let's try to darken a little bit this, but let's keep it readable as always. Yes, way better. So we can go BA. Perfect. Have you noticed just with a couple of simple styling how our sidebar is looking pretty good and we declare just a couple of styles so because everything is global we're using the same uh, uh, 
uh, declaration, the same uh, classes for every widget. It doesn't matter which widget the user will use, all the style are gonna be applied dynamically because the structure of every single widget, it's always the same. Now, before continuing, I wanna style, I wanna focus a little bit my attention to the tags because we have uh, something really interesting in the tags. So if we access the design file and we scroll down, we notice we have these spills in the tags and that's what I wanna do. So first, let's check the source code of the tag widget because even we, if we have the same classes, every widget is applying a unique class to identify what type of widget it is. So we know that this widget has the class widget tag cloud and the tag cloud is actually controlled by this container class called tag cloud. And that's perfect, that's what we want. So let's copy this tag cloud default class Let's scroll down here and let's write a little bit of comment text cloud widget. And I want every link, every link inside the tag cloud to be a display inline block having a background color of the same color of our design. I want a padding to be two pixels and four pixels and I want a border radius to be uh, let's say three pixels and let's take a look let's refresh let's go back here refresh so let's increase a little bit the border radius one two three four five six 10 pixel of border radius let's increase the side padding so we have less space let's decrease this one pixel that's way better let's change the color a, a little bit let's lighten it up so let's go back to e, -E, -E for this way better padding border radius let's copy all these classes and let's apply a uh, text align center to the tag cloud. So my tags are gonna be automatically aligned to the center. Now we have a little bit of problem because as you can see by default, WordPress and the widget of WordPress, the tag cloud, is applying an inline style of font size based on how many times or how many times that specific tag was used inside a post or a page or whatever section. So because the sunset tag is the most used one, WordPress is applying a gigantic font size variation that it's in line so I cannot override this with my code and we have 22 points compared to the eight points of the other links so what we have to do we have to uh, use a specific hook to edit a default uh, WordPress widget and remove that specific functionality and that's really easy to do of course let's access back our code editor and let's access our ink folder and inside the widgets.php file. Let's scroll down to the bottom and let's create a comment by writing any default WordPress widgets, because if we wanna edit other widgets, we can do it here. And here, let's create a function called sunset underscore tag underscore cloud font change and of course as usual you can call this function as you want i'm using just this convention because it's easier for me to understand here the function is gonna uh, have it's gonna carry a predefined array that we're gonna define with the variable args because it's usually the arguments of that specific widget also in this case you can call this variable however you want, but let's remember, remember to define a variable here because we need to grab the default declaration of the tag cloud widget. Here we can access two specific attributes of that specific arguments array. The first attribute is the args square brackets smallest, that stands for the smallest uh, uh, font size allowed to be used in the tag cloud and by default as you can as you remember was eight so let's leave it like that and then we have the second argument if we want to edit always accessible as an attribute in the array and it's called largest 
and we can limit with the largest to having eight as well. So we are saying to WordPress and to the Sunset Cloud that it doesn't matter if it's big, it's, it's small and how many times it's used, both smaller and larger font size that we want to allow to the specific tech cloud, it's eight points. And now at the end, we have to return the arguments array with these two edits apply to the smallest and largest attribute declaration. Now we have to hook this uh, function, this custom function that we created to be used in the widgets tag cloud. To do that, we have to use a filter, add underscore filter from WordPress. And this function is going to call a specific filter to be applied to this specific function. So the filter that we want to call is the widget to access the specific widget underscore tag underscore cloud underscore args. And basically, if you notice, this is really easy to read because what we're doing, we're applying a filter to the widget tag cloud arguments and the filter is the result of the function that we have to call in single quotes as well. And the function is the one that we declare and save it. So with this filter, we are applying this function to this generation of the tag. So we are editing the core of the tag cloud widget with the filter, and we are changing smallest and largest argument, and we are just returning the arguments that this filter is passing to us. So let's save it. Let's go back in our front end. Let's refresh. And now, as you can see here, every single tag has an eight point. Just to give you an example, if I want this to be the largest at top of 10 points, let's save it, let's refresh, the sunset is slightly bigger because it's the only one that has 10 points of font size. And that's perfect. And if we want to go maybe smaller, I go six points and 10 points, let's refresh. There you go. So you have full control on the widget tag cloud and pretty much on every widget with a filter. And this is pretty great. So this was a pretty quick and easy lesson. I showed you how with a simple filter, you can access the pre-built functionality of a widget. And we style the initial status of our sidebar with all the default widgets. A little bit of homework for the next lesson because there's really nothing I have to explain you to like understand on how to style this stuff. It, it's just pretty simple and straightforward CSS styling. So the homework for the next lesson that I'm going to upload in a couple of days is to style the category widget and also the recent comments. Don't bother about it two days ago because this is a functionality that we're gonna add maybe later, but I want you to style the name and then on a the second line, the title of the post. And this is, you can do this just by simply styling with CSS. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. So this is the homework for you until the next lesson. So enjoy this little bit of homework and it's gonna be really easy. You will notice how easy it is to style a predefined widget and try to reuse the same classes, try to not create too many classes and use a component based logic. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes to check the support me page on my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.